In part one of this series, we were able to successfully add wireless charging to this Game Boy Advance SP. However, in the process, we were unable to fully close the battery door. In that episode, I presented two possible solutions to this. The first was to 3D print a new battery door that would add additional space and increase the volume and the battery compartment. And the second was to use a smaller battery to compensate for the space used up by the wireless charging module. In this episode, we're going to do the latter and install a smaller battery. Let's roll the intro. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. So in part one of this series, we were able to successfully install the wireless charging module into this Game Boy Advance SP. Now the issue obviously that we ran into is we weren't able to close the battery door uh, because the wireless charging module took up a little bit too much space and we were trying to use the OEM battery. So if you haven't seen part one of this series and want to know how to install a wireless charger into your Game Boy Advance SP, go ahead and click at the card at the top of your screen or in the link in the description below. Now I came up with two solutions, uh, potential solutions for that uh, in that episode and in this one we're actually going to be enacting one of them and that is to use a smaller battery. So I just want to thank you guys all for the feedback and the great ideas and comments from part one of this video series. There were a lot of great ideas in there and I'm probably not gonna implement them in this video, but I probably will use some of them in, in future videos to further refine the wireless charging uh, capability in the Game Boy Advance SP. So like I said in this video, we're gonna be installing a thinner battery here, hopefully allowing us to fully close the battery door, the OEM battery door, so we have a nice flat surface and we can actually lay the Game Boy Advance SP flat onto a wireless charger. Now you guys are going to want to stay all the way to the end of this video because what I'm going to do is because we're using a wireless charger, uh, that method of charging tends to be a little bit slower than directly plugging in the charger uh, through the charge port. So I think it'd be actually really interesting to see how long it takes uh, to charge the battery uh, from when it's dead to fully charged. And now again, these are thinner batteries, so the capacity is a little bit less than the OEM battery. So the OEM battery that I have here is rated at 600 milliamp hours and the ones, uh, actually both of the candidates that we're going to be using uh, in this video are actually both 500 milliamp hours. So I do want to see how long it takes to fully charge a 500 milliamp hour battery uh, from when it's completely dead to fully charged utilizing the wireless charger. And not only that, but uh, I'm actually curious to see how long the battery actually lasts. Now keep in mind. This is a non-modded Game Boy Advance SP. So this is a standard AGS-001. Uh, this is not IPS modded, but uh, I think it'd be interesting to compare the results to what the official Nintendo documentation states um, is for the or original battery. All right, so as usual, I'm gonna go over all the components that you're gonna need in order to do this modification. And uh, I'm gonna start with the first battery I'll be using. So this is a lithium polymer battery. It is a 40, 30, 48, and, uh, and what that number actually means is uh, the 40 stands for it's four millimeters thick, the 30 stands for 30 millimeters wide, and the 48 stands for 48 millimeters in length. So basically that number gives the dimensions of this particular lithium polymer battery. And this one is rated at 3.7 volts, 500 milliamp hours. It's four millimeters uh, thick, which is actually quite a bit thinner than the OEM one. I measured the OEM one and this battery actually swelled a little bit. So I believe these batteries originally measured around five millimeters in terms of thickness. But like I said, this battery, this particular battery swelled and it's actually a little over six millimeters thick. So we're actually gonna save a little bit of space actually by using this almost two millimeters of space using this battery. So the other candidate that I have is is this battery. This is a 502248. So uh, again, those numbers mean that this particular battery is five millimeters thick, 22 millimeters wide, and 48 millimeters long. 
So this has the same length as the other battery, but it is a little bit uh, narrower in terms of its width at 22 millimeters and a little bit thicker at five millimeters versus the four millimeters. Um, but yeah, I, hopefully this one works as well. So this kind of gives you another option. And again, this one is also rated at 3.7 volts, 500 milliamp hours. Okay, great. So the last item you're gonna need is this Game Boy Advance SP battery board. Now this was designed by Mako. And if you don't know who Mako is, Mako actually has a, a fantastic YouTube channel where he basically does a lot of Game Boy mods and, and really just a great contributor to the community. And I think this is a really cool little PCB. And essentially what it does is it allows you to install batteries like this into the Game Boy Advance SP. So on this side, you solder the wire leads on the battery uh, to these pads here, which are nicely marked positive and negative. And then on the other side with the white uh, silk screen, there are the actual two battery contacts that uh, actually touch the two contacts in the Game Boy Advance SP battery compartment. All right, so that's actually everything you're gonna need. I have links to everything in the description below if you plan on doing this modification yourself. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this mod. To get started, grab the Game Boy Advance SP battery board and break one off. You'll notice that there are some sharp points left behind, so go ahead and file them away so that you have a smooth edge on all sides. Great, now all we need to do is prep the battery wires. First, let's cut the red wire about this long. And then let's cut the black wire a little bit longer so it can reach the other solder pad. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and solder the red wire to the positive pad of the PCB. And then solder the black wire to the negative solder pad on the PCB. Fantastic. I'm just gonna add a bit of Kapton tape to hold the PCB to the battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and install each battery and see if we can actually close the battery door. So it does look like that both the batteries fit reasonably well, although there is a bit of a bulge and it's not a 100% perfect fit and it isn't a perfectly flat bottom, but I do think for the most part, it does work pretty well. Although I am a little bit uncomfortable because it does seem like everything is under a little bit of pressure uh, when you fully tighten the rear battery door all the way down. And in my honest opinion, the 403048 battery actually fit a little bit better. It is a little bit thinner at four millimeters versus the other battery, which was around five millimeters. And I do think that we are able to close the battery door a little bit easier and the bulge is slightly smaller. So I do wanna give a shout out to Retro Rexy who did actually recommend that battery dimensions. And like I said, I do have a link to it in the description below. So again, Retro Rexy, thank you uh, for making this battery recommendation. So another issue that was brought to my attention is the issue of heat. The wireless charging module is very, very close to the battery and when you do charge it, it does get a little bit warm. Now, this was brought to my attention uh, by Ali, and thankfully, uh, Nicholas and Jeremy both were able to respond. Now, they did both indicate that there could be premature degradation to the battery because of all the heat that the uh, wireless charging module is producing. Now, one thing I would like to do is measure how much heat this wireless charging module is actually producing. I don't really have a good way of doing that. So if any of you guys know of a way that I can, you know, maybe install a probe or something uh, inside the battery compartment just to measure how much heat the uh, wireless charging module is producing, uh, let me know in the comments below. Now, the last issue I do want to talk to you about is when I actually put everything back together, uh, it was doing a weird thing when I tried to charge it. It was charging intermittently. So I would place it on the charging pad, it would begin to charge, and after a few seconds it would stop, and after another few seconds it would start back up again. Now I'm not exactly sure what caused that, and I thought maybe uh, because the wireless charging module was a bit too close to the battery, and maybe it was sort of interfering or interacting somehow with the PCB of the wireless charging module, and then telling it to stop charging, I'm not exactly sure what it is. If you guys know what the issue is, let me know uh, in the comments below. 
Uh, but interestingly enough, this kit actually came with what, what is called a magnetic spacer. Now this magnetic spacer kind of looks like a very thin magnet, something you would put on your refrigerator. And so what I did was I actually cut it to size and I put it in between the battery and the wireless charging module. And unfortunately that obviously takes up a little bit of space. So I, I was still able to close the battery door, but it caused it to you know further bulge a little bit. Um, but now I'm getting very reliable charging. So I can basically put it on any wireless charger and the position doesn't have to be as accurate. I can be a little bit um, less accurate with where I place it on the charging mat and it charges and it charges really, really well. So I'm not exactly sure what that magnetic spacer does, but somehow it enhances um, the ability of the wireless charging receiver to receive a charge uh, from the power base. So if any of you guys, again, if you know sort of the science behind that, please let me know in the comments below because I'd be really interested to know why why just adding that little magnetic spacer in between the battery and the wireless charging module allows it to charge more efficiently and more reliably. All right, so the last thing I do wanna show you guys is how long it takes for a completely dead battery to fully charge wirelessly. Because as you know, wireless charging isn't as efficient as charging through the actual port uh, through a wired connection. Uh, so I thought it'd be very interesting to see exactly how long that takes. Now do keep in mind the batteries we do have in here are only 500 milliamp hours and uh, the OEM one is supposed to be 600 milliamp hours and the documented charge time that I could find online uh, for the OEM Nintendo battery is supposedly right around three hours. So I'm gonna use that as a sort of benchmark and try and see how long it actually takes to charge this. And, and then the other thing I do wanna show is how long this 500 milliamp hour battery lasts. And the last thing to consider with that is that this is an unmodified Game Boy Advance AGS-001. So the amount of time that these actually last is supposedly anywhere between seven and 10 hours. So I'd be interested to see how long these 500 milliamp hour batteries uh, allow the Game Boy Advance SP to last. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started and see how long it takes for this to charge wirelessly. Alright, next let's see how long the battery lasts. Now, do remember Nintendo states that this should last anywhere between 7 and 10 hours, and that is on the original 600 milliamp hour battery, and the one we have in here is rated at 500 milliamp hours. Great, so it looks like it takes about two hours and 15 minutes to fully charge, and it lasts about 10 hours and 48 minutes. Now, do keep in mind, this is a 500 milliamp hour battery, and this is a non-modified AGS-001. As is, I'm not 100% satisfied with these results. It's a pretty tight squeeze in the battery compartment, and then there's the issue of heat. What I'm planning to do is find out how hot the module actually gets, and moreover, if it's something that we need to worry about. In the meantime, I still have quite a bit of work to do. As always, I welcome any feedback or suggestions. I've received many great ideas from y'all, so keep them coming. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, we'll see you next time.